GIS Fundamentals, Section 4 Maps, Data Entry, Editing, and Output Most maps, whether digital or hard copy, contain several components. A data area or pane occupies the largest part of the map and contains most of the depicted spatial data. A neat line is often included to provide a frame around all map elements, and insets may contain additional map elements. Scale bars, legends, titles, and other graphic elements such as a north arrow are often included. All maps have a map scale, defined as the ratio of the distance on the map to corresponding distance on the ground. Maps often depict coordinate lines. When the lines represent constant latitude and longitude, a set of coordinate lines is called a graticule. These lines may appear curved, depending on the map scale, the map coordinate system, and the location of the area on Earth's surface. Maps may also depict a grid consisting of lines of constant coordinates. Grid lines are typically drawn in both the X and Y directions and appear straight on most maps. Graticules and grids are useful because they provide a reference against which location may be quickly estimated. Cartometric maps are those that faithfully represent the relative position of objects and thus may be suitable as a source of spatial data. Map types Feature maps are among the simplest because they map points, lines, or areas and provide nominal information. Feature maps are perhaps the most common map form and examples include most road maps and standard map series such as the 7.5 minute topographic maps produced by the U.S. Geological Survey. Chloropleth maps depict quantitative information for areas. A mapped variable, such as population density, may be represented in a map. Dot density maps are another map form commonly used to show quantitative data. Dots or other point symbols are plotted to represent values. Isopleth maps, also known as contour maps, display lines of equal value. Isopleth maps are used to represent continuous surfaces. Rainfall, elevation, and temperature are features that are commonly represented using isopleth maps. Lines typically do not cross on isopleth maps in that there cannot be two different temperatures at the same location. Map Scale all maps have a scale, a relationship between a distance on the map and a corresponding distance projected on Earth. Map scale is often reported as a distance conversion, such as 1 inch to a mile, or as a unitless ratio, such as 1 to 24,000, indicating a unit distance on the map is equal to 24,000 units on the Earth's surface. Digital maps most often use a third method to report scale, as a bar or line of known distance labeled on the map.
a larger ratio signifies a large scale map. So a 1 to 24,000 scale map is considered large scale relative to a 1 to 100,000 scale map. It is helpful to remember that features appear larger on a larger scale map. Large scale maps generally have less geometric error than small scale maps if the same methods were used to produce them. Map generalization. Maps are abstractions of reality as are spatial data in a GIS database. This abstraction introduces map generalization, the unavoid unavoidable approximation of real features when they are represented on a map. Not all the geometric or attribute detail of this physical world are recorded. Only the most important characteristics are included. The set of features that are most important is subjectively defined and will differ among users. Feature generalization is one common form of generalization. Feature generalization is a modification of features when representing them on a map. Feature generalization types include fused, simplified, displaced, omitted, and exaggerated. Fused is when multiple features may be grouped to form a larger feature. Simplified is when the boundary or shape details are lost or rounded off. Displaced is when features may be offset to prevent overlap or to provide a standard distance between mapping symbols. Omitted is when small features in a group may be excluded from the map. Exaggerated is when standard symbol sizes are often chosen, for example, standard road symbol widths, which are much larger when scaled than the true road width. Generalization is present at some level in every map and should be recognized and evaluated for each map that is used as a source for data in GIS. Types of feature generalization include fused, simplified, displaced, omitted, and exaggerated. Map boundaries and spatial data. Hard copy maps have edges and discontinuities often occur at these edges. Differences in the time of data collection for adjacent map sheets may lead to inconsistencies across map borders. For example, the U.S. Geological Survey has produced 1 to 24,000 scale map sheets for all of the lower 48 United States of America. The original mapping took place over several decades, and there were inevitable time lags between mapping some adjacent areas. Differences in coordinate registration can lead to spatial mismatch across map sheets. Registration is the conversion of digitizer or other coordinate data to an Earth's surface coordinate system. Digitizing coordinate capture. Digitizing is the process by which coordinates from a map, image, or other sources are converted into a digital format in a GIS. Points, lines, and areas on maps or images represent real-world entities or phenomena. 
and these must be recorded in digital forms before they can be used in a GIS. Manual digitization is a human-guided coordinate capture from a map or image source. The operator guides an electronic device over a map or image and signals the capture of important coordinates, often by pressing a button on the digitizing device. On-screen digitizing. On-screen digitizing, also known as heads-up digitizing, involves manually digitizing on a computer screen using a digital image as a backdrop. Hard copy map digitization. Hard copy map digitizing is human guided coordinate capture from a paper, plastic, or other hard copy map. An operator securely attaches a map to a digitizing surface and traces lines or points with an electrically sensitized puck. Hard copy map digitizing is diminishing in importance as most paper documents have been converted to digital forms. Only cartometric maps should be directly digitized, and even though cartometric, a map may not be suitable. Maps may be unsuitable for digitizing due to the media. Creases, folds, and wrinkles can lead to non-uniform deformation of paper maps. Characteristics of manual digitizing Manual digitizing, whether from a digital image on screen or from a hard copy source, is common because it provides sufficiently accurate data for many, if not most, applications. Map or image scale and resolution impacts the spatial accuracy of digitized data. Small errors in map production or interpretation may cause significant positional errors when scaled to distances on Earth, and these errors are greater for smaller scale maps. The digitizing process. Lines have a starting point, often called a starting node, a set of vertices defining the line shape, and an ending node. Digitizing may be in point mode, where the operator must depress a button or otherwise signal to the computer to sample each point, or in stream mode, where points are automatically sampled at fixed time or distant frequency, perhaps once each meter. Stream mode helps when large numbers of lines are digitized because vertices may be sampled more quickly and the operator may become less fatigued. The stream sampling rate must be specified with care to avoid over or under sampled lines. Too short a collection interval results in redundant points not needed to accu accurately represent line or polygon shape. Too long a collection interval may result in the loss of important spatial detail. Minimum distance digitizing is a variant of stream mode digitizing that avoids some of the problems inherent with time sampled streaming. In minimum distance digitizing, a new point is not recorded unless it is more than some minimum threshold distance from the previously digitized point. Digitizing errors, node, and line snapping. Undershoots and overshoots are common errors that occur when digitizing. 
Undershoots are nodes that do not quite reach the line or another node, and overshoots are lines that cross over existing nodes or lines. Node snapping and line snapping are used to reduce undershoots and overshoots while digitizing. Snapping is a process of automatically setting nearby points to have the same coordinates. Snapping relies on a snap tolerance or snap distance. This distance may be interpreted as a minimum distance between features. Line snapping, sometimes called edge snapping, may also be specified. Line snapping inserts a node at a line crossing and clips the end when a small overshoot is digitized. The snap distance must be carefully selected for snapping to be effective. Reshaping, line smoothing and thinning. Digitizing software may provide tools to smooth, densify, or thin points while entering data. One common technique uses spline functions to smoothly interpolate curves between digitized points and thereby both smooth and densify the set of vertices used to represent a line. A spline is a set of polynomial functions that join smoothly. Polynomial functions are fit to successive sets of points along the vertices in a line. High vertex densities may also be found when data are derived from spline or smoothing functions that specify too high a point density. Many point thinning methods use a perpendicular weed distance measured from a spanning line to identify redundant points. The Lang method exemplifies this approach. A spanning line connects two non-adjacent vertices in a line. A predetermined number of vertices is spanned initially. Any intermediate points that are closer than the weed distance are marked for removal. Any points closer than the weed distance are marked for removal. Increasing the weed distance thins more vertices. Scan digitizing. Optical scanning is another method for converting hard copy documents into digital formats. Scanners have elements that emit and sense light. The scanner produces a raster representation of the map. Scan digitizing usually requires some form of skeletonizing or line thinning particularly if the data are to be converted to a vector data format. Scanned lines are often wider than a single pixel. One of several pixels may be selected to specify the position of a given portion of the line. Skeletonizing reduces the widths of lines or points to a single pixel. Editing geographic data. Identifying errors is the first step in editing. A connecting node joins two or more lines, while a dangling node is attached to only one line. Editing typically includes the ability to select, split, update, and add features. Once a feature is selected, 
various operations may be available, including erasing all or part of the feature, changing the coordinate values defining the feature, and in the case of lines, splitting or adding to the feature. Groups of features in an area may be adjusted through interactive rubber sheeting. Rubber sheeting involves fitting a local equation to adjust the coordinates of features. Polynomial equations are often used due to their flexibility and ease of application. Anchor points are selected, again on the graphic screen, and other points are selected by driving, dragging interactively on the screen to match point locations. All lines and points except the anchor points are interactively adjusted. Features common to several layers. One common problem in digitizing derives from representation of features that occur on different maps or images. These features rarely have identical locations on each map or image and often occur in different locations when digitized into their respective data layers. Features may differ because the maps were from different source materials. There are several ways to remove this common feature inconsistency. One involves removing inconsistencies while redrafting the data from conflicting sources onto a new base map. Redrafting is labor intensive and time consuming but forces a resolution of inconsistent boundary locations. A second, often preferable method, involves establishing a master boundary that is the highest accuracy composite of the available data sets. Coordinate Transformation Coordinate transformation brings spatial data into an Earth-based map coordinate system so that each data layer aligns with every other data layer. Coordinate transformation is also referred to as registration because it registers the layers to a map coordinate system. Coordinate transformation is most commonly used to convert newly digitized data from the digitizer scanner coordinate system to a standard map coordinate system. Control points. A set of control points is used to transform the digitized data from the digitizer or photo coordinate system to a map projected coordinate system. These control points are used to estimate equations that we use for the coordinate transformation. Control points differ from other digitized points in that we know both the map projection coordinates and the digitizer coordinates for these points. These two sets of coordinates for each control point, one for the map projection and one for the digitizer system, are used to estimate the coefficients for transformation equations, usually through a statistical least squares process. The transformation equations are then used to convert coordinates from the digitizer system to the map projection system. This on-the-fly transformation allows data to be output and analyzed with reference to map projected coordinates. In contrast to on-the-fly transformations, 
data can also be recorded in digitizer coordinates and the transformation applied later. Control points should meet or exceed several criteria. First, control points should be from a source that provides the highest feasible coordinate accuracy. Second, control point accuracy should be at least as good as the desired overall positional accuracy required for the spatial data. Third, control points should be as evenly distributed as possible throughout the data area. The Affine Transformation The Affine Coordinate Transformation employs linear equations to calculate map coordinates. Map projection coordinates are often referred to as eastings and northings and are related to the X and Y digitizer coordinates. The Affine is the most commonly applied coordinate transformation because it provides for these three man, main effects of translation, rotation, and scaling. Because it often introduces less error than higher order polynomial transformations. The affine system of equations has six parameters to be estimated. As with all statistical estimates, more control points are better than fewer, but we will reach a point of diminishing returns after some number of points, typically somewhere between 18 and 30 control points. The affine coordinate transformation is usually fit using a statistical method that minimizes the root mean square error. The root mean square error is the square root of the errors squared divided by the number of errors. A statistical process provides a root mean square error, a summary of the difference between the true or measured and predicted control point coordinates. It provides one, in, one index of transformation quality. Transformations are fit. The root mean square error will usually be less than the true transformation error at a randomly selected point because we are actively minimizing the northing and easting residual, residual errors when we statistically fit the transformation equations. However, the root mean square error is an index of accuracy, and a lower root mean square error generally indicates a more accurate affine transformation. Other coordinate transformations. The conformal coordinate transformation is similar to the affine. Like the affine transformation, the conformal transformation is also a first order polynomial. Unlike the affine, the conformal transformation requires equal scale changes in the x and y directions. The conformal may be estimated when only two control points are available. Higher order polynomial transformations are sometimes used to transform among coordinate systems.
a caution when evaluating transformations. Selecting the best coordinate transformation to apply is a subjective process. We want at least two control points in each quadrant of the working area with a target of 20% in each quadrant. A lower root mean square error does not mean a better transformation. The root mean square error is a useful tool when comparing among transformations that have the same model form. For example, when comparing one affine to another affine. The root mean square error is not useful when comparing among different model forms. For example, when comparing an affine to a second order polynomial. The root mean square error is typically lower for a second and other higher order polynomials than an affine transformation. But this does not mean the higher order polynomial provides a more accurate transformation. The higher order polynomial will introduce more error than an affine transformation on most orthographic maps. And an affine transformation is preferred. Higher order polynomials allow more flexibility in warping the surface to fit control points. Unfortunately, this warping may significantly deform the non-control point coordinates and add large errors when the transformation is applied to all data in a layer. Thus, high order polynomials and others should be used with caution. Finally, independent tests of the transformations make the best comparisons among transformations. A completely independent set of widely distributed test points are ideal, but these rarely exist. The extra points either haven't been collected or suitable locations do not exist. The best way to test the accuracy of the transformation typically uses a bootstrap approach that treats each point as an independent test point. One point is withheld, the transformation estimated, and the error at the withheld point calculated. The point is replaced in the estimation set and the next point withheld, fitting the same type of transformation. The equations will be slightly different. The error at the second withheld point is then calculated. This process is repeated for each control point and a mean error calculated. Control point sources, surveying. Control points must have two characteristics to be useful. First, the point must be visible on the map, data layer, or image that we wish to register. And second, we must have precise ground coordinates in our target map projection. Control points from existing maps and digital data. Registered digital image data are common sources of ground control points. Digital image data may be obtained that are registered to a known coordinate system. Typically, the coordinates of a corner pixel are provided, and the lines and columns for the image run parallel to the easting and northing direction of the coordinate system. The corner location coordinates are printed on USGS quadrangle maps. The USGS has produced digital raster graphics or DRG files that are scanned images of the 1 to 24,000 scale quadrangle maps. 
these DRGs come referenced to a standard coordinate system. So it is a simple and straightforward task to extract the coordinates of road intersections or other well-defined features that have been plotted on the USGS quadrangle maps. GNSS control points. The Global Positioning System, GPS, GLONASS, and GALILEO are global navigation satellite systems that allow us to establish control points. Raster Geometry and Resampling Data often must be resampled when converting between coordinate systems or changing the cell size of a raster data set. Resampling involves reassigning the cell values when changing raster coordinates or geometry. Resampling is required when changing cell sizes because the new cell centers will not align exactly with the old cell centers. Changing coordinate systems may change the direction of the X and Y axes, and GIS systems often require that the cell edges align with the coordinate system axes. Hence, the new cells often do not correspond to the same locations or extents as the old cells. Common resampling approaches include the nearest neighbor, which is taking the output layer value from the nearest input cell center, bilinear interpolation, which is distance-based averaging of the four nearest cells, and cubic convolution, which is a weight average of the 16 nearest cells. Common resampling approaches include the nearest neighbor, bilinear interpolation, and cubic convolution. Map projection versus transformation. Map transformations should not be confused with map projections. A map transformation typically employs a statistically fit linear equation to convert coordinates from one Cartesian coordinate system to another. A map projection differs from a transformation in that it, it is an analytical, formula-based conversion between coordinate systems, usually from a curved latitude and longitude coordinate system to a Cartesian coordinate system. No statistical fitting process is used with a map projection. Map transformations should rarely be used in place of map projection equations when converting geographic data between map projections. Consider an example when data are delivered to an organization in Universal Transverse Mercator, or UTM, coordinates and are to be converted to state plane coordinates prior to integration into a GIS database. Two paths may be chosen. The first involves projection from UTM to geographic coordinates, or latitude and longitude, and then from these geographic coordinates to the appropriate state plane coordinates. This is the correct, most accurate approach. An alternate and often less accurate approach involves using a transformation to convert between different map projections. 
In this case, a set of control points would be identified and the coordinates determined in both UTM and state plane coordinate systems. The transformation coefficients would be estimated and these equations applied to all data in the UTM data layer. This new output data layer would be in state plane coordinates. This transformation process should be avoided as a transformation may introduce additional positional error. Transforming between projections is used quite often, and inadvertently, when digitizing data from paper maps. Spatial errors in using a transformation instead of a projection are small at these map scales under typical digitizing conditions. Cartography and Map Design Cartography is the art and techniques of making maps. A primary purpose of cartography is to communicate spatial information. This requires identification of the intended audience, information to communicate, area of interest, and physical and resource limitations. In short, the whom, what, where, and how. Automatic map symbol selection and placement is nearly always suboptimal, and the novice cartographer should scrutinize these choices and manually improve them. Digital data output. A common contemporary format is the geographic markup language, or GML. This is an extension of XML for geographic features. XML is in turn the lingua franca for human machine readable documents. As with most XML, there are two parts for any GML dataset. A schema that describes the document and the document containing the geographic data. GML is a standard, but there can be many extensions, so a community of users can extend the standard with additional features and document the extension in a standard way. Metadata, data documentation. Metadata are information about spatial data. Metadata describe the content, source, lineage, methods, developer, coordinate system, extent, structure, spatial accuracy, attributes, and responsible organization for spatial data. In the United States, the Federal Geographic Data Committee, or FGDC, has defined a content standard for digital geospatial metadata, CSDGM, to specify the content and format for metadata. There are over 330 different elements in the CSDGM. There are 10 basic types of information in the CSDGM. One, identification describing the data set. Two, data quality. Three, spatial data organization. Four, spatial reference coordinate system. Five, entity and attribute. Six, 
distribution and options for obtaining the data set. 7. Currency of metadata and responsible party. 8. Citation. 9. Time period information used with other sections to provide temporal information. And 10. Contact organization or person. The CSDGM is a content standard and does not specify the format of the metadata. As long as the elements are included, properly numbered, and identified with correct values describing the data set, the metadata are considered to conform with the CSDGM. There is a standard generalized markup language, SGML, for the exchange of metadata. There is a parallel effort to develop and maintain international standards for metadata. The standards are known as the ISO 19115 International Standards for Metadata. GIS Fundamentals, Section 4, Maps and Data Entry, Section Summary. Map and other data often need to be converted to a target coordinate system via a map transformation. Transformations are different from map projections, in that transformations use empirical least squares processes to convert coordinates from one Cartesian system to another. Transformations are often used when registering digitized data to a known coordinate system. Map transformations should not be used when a map projection is called for. Metadata are the data about data. They describe the content, origin, form, coordinate system, spatial and attribute data characteristics, and other relevant information about spatial data. Metadata facilitate the proper use, maintenance, and transfer of spatial data. Metadata standards have been developed, both nationally and internationally, with profiles used to cross-reference elements between metadata standards.